Hi, today is uh, Thursday the 1st of June, I believe. Um, I'm just going to go through and really show my ugly baby um, today. We've got to review um, our backlog and detri to, uh, decide where to focus our attention. So, um, you know, I'm recording my screen uh, using this neat tool called uh, Visor. Um, uh, to, to, to view the my mobile phone on, on the screen. Um, so I'm just going to talk about the product and uh, what it looks like at the moment. I'm not going to go through a full explanation of what it does and how it works, but really just why it looks the way it does and why it, <coughs> excuse me that hasn't changed <coughs> um, for a while. So um, let me just let me just uh, kick it into action. Um, when you use our app, it does require you to provide the 12 word mnemonic, um, which is what's known as the seed to your HD wallet. Um, you know, and we, and we, you know, it's, it's not very good the way that that's done. Um, other wallets will do it differently. Um, probably try and hide that from the user but we took the decision that we didn't want to store any um, you know the, the, the seed key or any information um, with the minimum viable product okay so this is the splash page um, where you arrive you can immediately see that um, we're using a very traditional web uh, framework actually it's bootstrap um, for the look and feel uh, and actually the message proposition on the front screen has evolved quite a lot in the last year and this still remains um, sort of the cruder message proposition format that we had over a year ago so um, uh, when you first use the app, as I say, I'm not going to go through it but when you first use the app you have to create your key so it has a way of helping you create that first 12 word mnemonic and obviously it tells you to store it safely um, but uh, you know you have to cut and paste in that 12 word mnemonic we don't really like that of course that's going through the clipboard it's not really the most secure uh, way of um, working with your 12 word mnemonic um, but you can see it, all the behavior is, is typical uh, web app. I clicked a button there um, to go in. Um, we're then looking at a list of activities in a view. Um, we've got a credit at the bottom. Uh, the app, obviously, being an Ethereum-based product, does require um, a credit um, to, to, to actually be able to pay for transactions and things like that. Um, but you can see we're using really crude symbols. Um, we're listing the activities in the wallet in, in kind of a really retro way. I mean, maybe one day this would be fashionable to have an app that looks like a retro web app. Um, but in reality, some of the UX behavior, the patterns of behavior are also um, uncomfortable for the user. You have to go through a number of steps and those steps do involve creating transactions so there is this uncomfortable latency between one action and another as we submit a transaction onto the network and then we wait for it to be confirmed um, so there's uh, some orchestration improvements required like collapsing um, the different the different uh, behavioral steps um, but you can see the menu as well, it's a typical sort of bootstrap menu, drops down. Um, you can see clearly when we're demoing it, it does help us because there are three roles in our, in our ecosystem. There's someone who creates an activity, there's someone who acknowledges an activity, and there's someone who verifies it. So the menu helps us explain uh, how the product works. You can share your address, uh, we've got an address book inside the app. Um, that, that's kind of uh, important functionality because although you can pull uh, a, a addresses of other people, public addresses of other people from an attribute uh, in your contacts on your mobile, we can never trust that that public address has not been tampered with. So there is actually the ability to save the addresses in the app itself 
and um, we we sign those um, with one of your uh, HD wallet addresses. So, so you always know it's not been tampered with because we check the signature. Um, you know, we've got uh, various settings, and when we go in there again, all the panels look really sort of, you know, uh, retro. <laughs> Um, if that's the appropriate word, um, you know, if you want to find out what your credit is in the settings view, you sort of tap uh, and it'll pop up. Uh, you can send credit to people. Again, it's a really conventional kind of form, web looking form, um, you know, etc. You can change your network access point if you're using a node on a different network. Um, theoretically, it should work. But um, with the MVP, uh, we've only ever tested it on our own private net. So you can just see, it's just a really ugly looking baby. Um, but it does work, and we have been able to um, demo this and train people on how they would use it in certain scenarios. Um, and generally speaking, they've been able to understand it. So f as a training as a minimum viable product that works and as a training aid um, this has been sufficient but what I'm looking to do now is prioritize shifting to a more mobile phone app feel um, you know something like Instagram WhatsApp or, or any of these tools that people are used to using um, and uh, the technology set will probably use for that is React Native. Um, but I have to decide whether my priorities are improving the user interface or maybe putting more functionality in, such as the use of a hard wallet. So at the moment when you're creating activities, um, uh, it's, it's, it's using the mnemonic, 12 word mnemonic you've provided and it has the HD wallet sort of open in the software and uh, signs things that way but of course there are some security issues with keeping that in memory in the app so um, one thing I'd like to do is have the ability to put um, certainly with Trezor I know I can do it is connect to Trezor and then allow um, signing of activity transactions to be done on the Trezor okay so that's a really cool piece of functionality I like to have and I have to decide, do I prioritise from making my baby look prettier? Um, oops, sorry. My baby looking prettier uh, uh, or showing more professional uh, functionality, you know, in the minimum viable product. So um, there we are. That's it. As I say, that's my ugly baby. Um, and uh, if you're interested in telling me whether I should focus more on how it looks or... or or not be um, what's the word? Uh, I shouldn't. Uh, I shouldn't judge a book by its cover, and uh, possibly adding more functionality so what people understand uh, what professional capability we want in the product. Um, to have them understand that rather than just seeing it, seeing a pretty interface. Okay. Um, all right. If you're interested, let me know in the comments and subscribe if you want to keep me doing this. Until tomorrow.